and we are calling it iPhone. And each of these revolutionary user interfaces has made possible a revolutionary product. It's already been a big day, but we do have one more thing. Introducing Apple Vision Pro. Apple finally announced its Vision Pro Mixed Reality headset. It's considered Apple's quote-unquote most significant product launch event in nearly a decade. And arguably Apple's brand new VR and AR headset marks a watershed moment for the AR and VR industry, legitimizing the vision that Mark Zuckerberg first articulated back in 2015 when he laid out the rationale for acquiring Oculus for around 2 billion US dollars. We believe in this vision so deeply that we renamed our whole company after it. And we're in a moment now when a lot of the technologies that will power the metaverse are starting to take off. And while Apple is clearly the undisputed best hardware maker in the world, it seems like we are about to witness a new phase of the heated rivalry between Apple and Meta platforms. Between Apple CEO Tim Cook and Meta founder Mark Zuckerberg, as Meta also announced its Quest 3 headset a few days before Apple's 2023 WWDC event. So what does the fact that the rivalry between Matter and Apple is seemingly moving to a new playing field, virtual and augmented reality, mean for investors and the stocks of both companies? What should investors be aware of and start thinking about? This is what we will discuss in this video, so stay tuned. Okay, just to be clear, this is not going to be another tech video outlining all of the specs of both devices, so the Quest 3 and the Vision Pro, but instead I want to take on the lens of both Apple and Meta investors, discuss what the recent announcements of both companies mean for the future of both California-based companies and of course the underlying stocks. So I'll start with Apple and this will be the main focus of this video. I would argue that at first glance the 2023 announcement was a major success and most of the reviews of the headset seem to be extremely positive, stressing that Apple managed to exceed the already high expectations many of the tech interested people had. Is this headset any good? And the answer is yes, yeah, some of the parts of this headset that I tried are actually the best I have ever seen in any VR headset by a mile. But I think Apple might also face a major problem and possibly an existential risk when it comes to this new technology and new computing platform, which I will address a little later in this video. So first off, as you probably know, Apple is really good at marketing and they've once again proven that last week. During the Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple was very careful with its choice of words and very deliberately avoided, yeah, current hype words like AR, VR, AI, mixed reality or the metaverse. And instead they use terms like spatial computing, immersive environments and machine learning. And by not being overly techy in their wording and by stressing the real life use cases of augmented reality and stressing that Apple doesn't want you to escape the real world as suggested in the movie Ready Player One, but instead enhance the real world for you. I feel like they've successfully reached a broader audience than Meta has and arguably were able to convince some of the skeptics of this new technology. And I think that's mainly because Apple is just not really good at marketing, but also really, really good at conveying and creating value for its customers. Like in previous instances of unveiling completely new products, Apple once again succeeded in making a completely new product that is relatively unfamiliar to the broader consumer audience, easily understandable and appealing by highlighting its potential to enhance our daily lives. Overall, I think there are four main potential value drivers of the Vision Pro. First, the mixed reality headset basically replaces your need for a monitor or multiple monitors even. Secondly, the Vision Pro can provide new ways to collaborate in the world of work and to connect in the social world. It can thirdly offer a very unique and immersive entertainment experience. And finally, it allows you to capture and even relive memories in a yeah, completely new way. On top of this, the operating system of the Vision Pro called Vision OS is of course compatible with all of the other Apple devices and you get immediately access to hundreds or thousands of apps that you are already familiar with. So 
So taking all of this into consideration and without getting too much into the specs of this device, it comes as no surprise that Apple itself proudly declared that the Vision Pro is the most advanced personal electronics device ever. But in a way, this value proposition that I just outlined creates a problem for Apple too. As we just outlined, the Vision Pro is in a way basically integrating multiple devices into one. It's your productivity, workstation, your entertainment platform, and so much more at the same time. If you purchased a new state-of-the-art TV, surround sound system, powerful computer with multiple high-definition displays, high-end camera, and more, you still would not have come close to what Vision Pro delivers. And as such, Apple is most certainly thinking about the risk of yeah, cannibalizing its other device categories. If we just take a look at the breakdown of Apple's last 12 months of revenue, well, then we can see that the iPhone is by far Apple's biggest revenue driver, representing 52% of Apple's overall revenue, followed by services with 20%, and then wearables, Macs, and iPads with around 10% each. So I think, and I would argue that in the near term, mixed reality especially represents a risk for the desktop computer and the tablet categories. It seems like it's only the logical next evolutionary step for these kind of devices. For example, during the WWDC event, Apple showed that the Vision Pro has the potential to boost overall productivity. I mean, you get access to a wide suite of productivity apps, you're able to operate with just your voice, your eyes and your hands instead of some kind of input device. You can work with multiple monitors in this fairly small device and basically have this huge workspace right with you anywhere you go. And then on the entertainment side, it's essentially the ultimate consumption device. Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, was invited to participate in the Apple keynote where they unveiled a partnership between the two companies to create immersive content and experiences. Multiple screens, for example, can be displayed at the same time. Sports enthusiasts can watch their favorite game with the so-called courtside view. The same goes for concerts and festivals, of course. And you've got spatial audio that adds another layer to the overall immersive experience. So I think this is a near or medium term risk for Apple to be aware of, cannibalizing its tablets and desktop computer segment. And obviously there are a lot of unanswered questions when it comes to yeah, the future in this area. Who knows how big the market will be, what market share Apple will have, or what the overall margin structure will look like. But it's certainly something worth thinking about if you are an Apple shareholder. Now on top of this, as Ben Thompson pointed out on his blog, quote unquote, this tech could also represent the next step in the evolution of the smartphones, removing the screen altogether and a virtual keyboard. When it happens, Apple will be in danger of becoming a victim to innovators dilemma, unless it can be a pioneer, but I think that's 10 plus years off. I think this is also what partly motivated Mark Zuckerberg to try to become the leader in the AR and VR space and to progress innovation yeah, in this new industry. The whole point of acquiring Oculus a few years ago for 2 billion US dollars and then pouring an additional 45 billion US dollars into Reality Labs was to own the next computing platform and to no longer be dependent on the owners of the iOS and Android platforms, Apple and Google. Here's what Zuckerberg wrote in an internal memo back in 2015. Our vision is that VR AR will be the next major computing platform after mobile in about 10 years. It can be even more ubiquitous than mobile, especially once we reach AR since you can always have it on. It's more natural than mobile since it uses our normal human visual and gestural systems. It can even be more economical because once you have a good VR AR system, you no longer need to buy phones or TVs or many other physical objects. They can just become apps in a digital store. What about Apple's multi-billion smartwatches segment? Well, if you look 10 years out, who knows what this product category will look like and whether it still exists. It might also be integrated into a bigger mixed reality solution. And I know this sounds like real science fiction, but let me just quote what Meta's vice president of AR, Alex Himmel, has said. We don't want people to have to choose between an input device on their wrist and smartwatch functionality that they've come to love. So we are building a neural interfaces watch. Number one, this device will do input input to control your classes, input to control the functionality on your wrist, and input to control the world around you. So to wrap up this segment about Apple, here's my take. Personally, I think the Vision Pro will not replace phones or watches anytime soon. 
PCs and tablets, on the other hand, are much more likely to go extinct in the medium term, maybe within the next 10 years or so. But there's probably the bigger risk that the innovators dilemma may be holding Apple back when it comes to yeah, being radically innovative. Apple is arguably the financially most successful company in the world. And as Clayton Christensen outlined in his book, The Innovator's Dilemma, Apple majors want to keep going with what works for them, what brings them billions of dollars each year until suddenly they don't. Because the world around them has changed and they didn't move fast enough. Meta, on the other hand, clearly doesn't have this problem. They can only win in this space and they can arguably innovate much more ruthlessly. The overall reaction to Apple's presentation was that Meta was completely outcompeted, outclassed on the hardware front. But let me just highlight that this mainstream perception is in my view, not accurate. I think you got to point out that the Vision Pro will cost more than seven times what the just announced Quest 3 will cost. Also, as John Lex, who is the vice president of product design at Meta pointed out on Twitter, from a technical point of view, Meta could ship a similar product if they wanted to. So at a $500 price tag, I think the Quest 3 will offer tremendous value too. And then, you know, of course the, the $3,500 price, um, you know, on the one hand, I get it for, with all the stuff that they're trying to pack in there. On the other hand, a lot of people aren't going to find that to be affordable. So I think that there's a chance that that them coming in actually increases demand um, for the overall space and that Quest 3 is actually the primary beneficiary of that. Now to get back to Apple's innovators dilemma, Apple likely has time to position itself. There's likely going to be a long transition period when it comes to replacing Apple's major product categories and with the 2023 WWC announcement. I think Apple has shown that they are actually willing to also radically innovate. And they are clearly, together with Meta, of course, the leaders in the new field of mixed reality. So the biggest risk to both companies, both Meta and Apple, may not be who is going to be the winner in this new market. Actually, I would bet a lot of money that there's not going to be just one winner. It's likely not a winner takes all market, but rather if there is actually demand for mixed reality headsets. Let me just share what mostly borrowed ideas yeah, discussed on Twitter. The real question on AR VR is not market share related questions. Who wins or loses? The real question is to what extent people and how many people want or need AR VR hardware. Those questions will still loom large post WWDC. He also questioned how serious Apple actually is if you consider the price tag of the Vision Pro almost $4,000 after tax. So let me know in the comments down below who you think will actually be able to afford and willing to buy a Vision Pro for, yeah, as I said, $4,000 after tax. Now, obviously this is a first generation device. And of course the price will come down over time as technology progresses and as this technology becomes more broadly appealing. So what about matter? Well, if you do believe that there is actually demand for VR and AR devices in the future, then I would argue that if anything, matter is a beneficiary of the matter announcement. As Apple, as a company with a very big brand and arguably a much better reputation, just legitimized Zuckerberg's efforts. You know, I, I do think that this is a certain level of validation for the category. I think having Apple come in and share that vision will make a lot of people who are fans of their products um, really consider that. Arguably, Matter is even ahead in reach and accessibility, having sold 20 million Quest headsets, while Apple just cut its Vision Pro sales target to 150,000 units from the previously discussed 1 million units. So again, let me know what you think of the current status of the AR and VR market. And if you want to learn more about a similar topic, how Google is facing the innovators dilemma too, and what Google can learn from matter, watch the following video next. Take care.